Hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to talk about Georgia Tech's knowledge-based AI class. That's part of their online master's program. I took the class and I'm here to tell you all about it. Hopefully give you some tips and tricks that will save you some headache. So let's get started. All right, so let's talk about knowledge-based AI. So this was actually the very first class I took in the program. I would highly recommend it if you're just starting out. It is like an easy to medium level class with 12 hours of homework a week, and you can work ahead if need be. So knowledge-based AI is getting computers to think and reason like humans do, which doesn't mean they'll do everything logically exactly every time, but it at least helps us understand how do humans think in the first place. Graded course material for this class is one semester long project with some weekly check-ins, five mini projects that are leak code style, three written homework assignments that are a bit tedious but not difficult, and two exams. All right, so let's talk about the project that you'll be doing throughout the semester. You are going to write an AI agent that solves Raven's progressive matrices. So here's an example problem. You might know by looking at it that the missing shape is a diamond with the right square filled in. Your AI agent will know that for you. And uh, here's a more complicated question. The answer is number eight, and I'm not sure how that's the answer to be honest, but your AI agent will hopefully know that number eight is the correct answer. Coding. So for this project, you're going to do a lot of coding. It's nice though that it's spread out over the entire semester. You start out with a package that basically just reads in each image and it also reads in the possible answer images and that's about it. The rest you have to come up with and uh, my advice to get started is trying, trying to use the affine and set transformation induction model that was written by the professor himself. You can totally use this, that's fine, just don't copy the code from it. And it's just a nice walkthrough of like one possible way to solve these problems. I used this model and I got a 68 out of 96 on the uh, puzzle scoring part. And that was enough to get an A in the class. So at least that's like a good fallback plan if you can't figure out a different way. Mini projects. So you have five mini projects that are kind of like leak code problems. The first is trying to get wolves and sheep across a river with a boat that can hold two animals. The thing is, you can never have more wolves than sheep on either side of the river at any time. So to solve this, you can use recursion and a guess and check method, or in other words, generate and test in fancy AI vocab. Mini project number two is block world. So you have these blocks and you're trying to get them into a goal configuration with the least number of moves possible. And so my advice for this, you can read more about the actual implementation and stuff, or at least my like suggestions here in the article linked in the description below. But you want to have a way to score states, like which states are better or worse than others. Mini project three is sentence reading. So you get some simple sentences in English, and you're supposed to provide the right answer in English. Um, and so it can be a little tricky because there's just a ton of different questions that you could get asked. But uh, my advice is split up the words into categories like adjectives, nouns, verbs. And that way it's a lot easier to figure out what the answer might be to a question. Mini project four is monster identification. So you basically just get a bunch of monsters, quote unquote, and their attributes and true false for each of those monsters. Then you get a new monster without the true or false which you have to guess, is it true or is it false? Uh, there are a lot of ways to do this, but I did like a brute force method and that seemed to work just fine. All right, the last mini project is monster diagnosis. It's kind of similar, but instead of trying to say just true or false, you're actually trying to think of a combination of diseases, quote unquote, that describe the monster's uh, vitamin deficiencies. Yeah, again, like, Brute force worked for this one as well. I mean, that's, yeah, worst case scenario. You can do that. Homeworks, uh, yeah, three written homework assignments. They're pretty easy, just a little tedious. Uh, not too bad, though. Exams, you get two exams. They're both open note and open internet, so that is great. You just cannot talk to a person while taking the exams. Uh, other than that, though, yeah, not too bad. Like, my suggestion is watch the lecture videos. You don't need to re re memorize everything, but... Just kind of have ideas of where in the videos each section was talking about or whatever, and then you can refer back to it while you're taking the exam. 
And there's my grade breakdown if you're interested. Yeah, I barely got that A. This was at the beginning of the program, like I mentioned, when I was still trying. Thanks for watching the video. Hope you liked it. I'm going to be making some more of other classes I've taken. Check out my other ones that I've already made of other classes. And see you in the next one.